Hi, I'm Dave Kelly, and I'm known as America's Student Leadership Trainer. Uh, I am a great believer in uh, service and serving other people, and so I have been doing uh, readings of some books for children uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I've got a new one that I want to read to you today. But before I, I start on that, I wanted to share that today I am uh, especially dedicating this book to a wonderful woman, Marjorie Harper. She is the Director of Student Life at Bozier Parish Community College near Shreveport, Louisiana. She is going through uh, cancer treatment now, and I saw on her uh, Facebook page today that she's getting treatment today. So hopefully when she gets home from that, she can sit back and enjoy this story. And I'm thinking about her particularly today because in the mail, I got my Hope for Harp t-shirt. Uh, that her friends have been buying and wearing to show support uh, for her. So uh, I appreciate that coming uh, all the way from Arkansas. And uh, it's very comfy and I'm looking forward to wearing it often. So my book today, uh, I've done some Dr. Seuss books before, but today I decided to share one that I always read to the kindergartners that I work with at an elementary school here in Atlanta. This is a series of books uh, featuring Raggedy Ann and Andy. They live in a young girl's playroom. Her name is Marcella, and they can move and talk when there's not people around. And so they have adventures. And so this is the first in a series of about 20 books. Uh, I've got a lot of them, so I'll be reading some of those over time. And I hope you enjoy this. This one's called Sunny Bunny Comes Home. Now, they live in the playroom in Marcella's house. So you can see her house and the playroom is over here, okay? Now, sometimes they go outside to the playhouse and then they can go through this hole in the fence and they can go to the deep, deep woods. And uh, we'll have some adventures in the deep, deep woods later on. And then sometimes they go to a place called Raggedy Land where people can't go. So these are the, the, the places that they go. And uh, so we're going to, I'm gonna share with you this story and I uh, hope you enjoy it. It was the third rainy day in a row, and Marcella was running out of things to do. She wandered into her playroom carrying the balloons that her father had brought her home for her. She placed a book on the window seat, then she uh, tucked the balloon strings under the book to keep them from floating up to the ceiling, because then she wouldn't be able to reach them. What a dreary day, sighed Marcella, wondering what to do next. She had already looked at all of her picture books and put together all of her puzzles. She was sure that her dolls were as tired of playing tea party as she was. She sat on the playroom floor and looked up at her colorful balloons. See her dolls? They're sitting there at the tea party. Suddenly, she remembered the attic. Marcella loved to look through the things her mother and father stored there. She ran up the stairs. Oh my, she exclaimed when she opened the attic door. I don't know which box to open first. You see all the things they have up in their attic? Right in front of her was a big brown trunk with metal latches. She lifted the lid. The trunk was full of clothes, lovely old fashioned ones. Marcella couldn't believe that people had really worn clothes that looked like these, probably from the 80s. She tried on one of the dresses, then she tried on a pair of high heeled shoes. See, so you're getting all dressed up. Marcella admired herself in the mirror. She tried on hats and scarves and necklaces and bracelets. They all looked very funny to Marcella. Then she reached deeper in the trunk to see what else she could find. As Marcella poked around the trunk, her hand touched something soft. She smiled when she saw what it was. It was a stuffed toy. How did a cute little bunny like you get locked up in here? She exclaimed. Poor thing, I wonder how long you've been here. At that moment, Marcella's mother called out, it's time to go shopping, Marcella. Marcella quickly but carefully put away all the things she had taken out, all except the stuffed bunny. 
You're coming with me, she said happily. I know a much better place for you to live. As Marcella dashed downstairs, her mother said in surprise, That's Sonny Bunny. He used to be mine when I was a little girl. I'm so glad you found him. Sonny Bunny, repeated Marcella, smiling. That's the perfect name for him. He's almost the color of sunshine. I'll just put Sunny Bunny in the playroom now, Marcella said to her mother, and then I'll be ready to go. Marcella set Sunny Bunny on the shelf next to Raggedy Ann and her other dolls. She gave him a little kiss and said, meet your new friends, little bunny. I think you're going to like your new home. As soon as Marcella's footsteps faded away, Raggedy Ann turned to him and said, Sunny Bunny, can it really be you? Do you remember me? Of course I do, Raggedy Ann, he answered. I remember all the wonderful times you and Raggedy Andy and I had together. Some of the other dolls began to speak. Uh, who, who is this rabbit? asked Percy the policeman doll, who liked to get his facts straight. Are you going to live here forever? asked the camel with the wrinkled knees. He was very kind, but he always worried about changes in the playroom. Where did you come from? asked Babette the French doll. Sunny Bunny felt confused. He had been alone up in the attic for many years. He wasn't used to hearing all of these voices. This is my old friend, Sonny Bunny, said Raggedy Ann. A long time ago, he and Raggedy Andy and I lived together in this house, house with Marcella's mother when she was a little girl. When she grew up, continued Sonny Bunny, we all got packed away in the attic, but someone put me in a box of clothes by mistake. And when Marcella was born, I guess they couldn't find me. How sad for that little bunny. He wanted to be downstairs with all of his friends. Sunny Bunny jumped to the floor and hopped over to Raggedy Ann. They looked at each other and they hugged. The other dolls smiled at Sunny Bunny. He smiled back shyly. You'll like living in the playroom with us, said Raggedy Andy. Yes, agreed Raggedy Ann. The dolls who live here are very special. When they heard that, Raggedy Ann, when they heard Raggedy Ann say that, the dolls glowed with pride. They were all feeling a little shy around Sunny Bunny, but suddenly they wanted to show him how special they really were. They all wanted Sunny Bunny to like them. Raggedy Andy did five cartwheels right across the playroom floor. Can you do cartwheels? I never could. Babette, the French doll, wound up the music box and did a graceful little dance. Tim, the toy soldier, played on his drum. Rat-a-tat-tat, rat-a-tat-tat. Then he marched across the, the room like a hero in a parade. Raggedy Dog threw a ball in the air, and then he caught it in his mouth before it could bounce. Ah, woof. Sunny Bunny watched as the dolls performed. They were certainly were very special. Sunny Bunny tried to think of something that would make him special, too, but he couldn't think of a thing. How will I ever fit in here, he wondered. He was so sad that his floppy ears dropped all the way down until they touched the floor. Don't worry, Sunny Bunny, whispered Raggedy Ann. They're just showing off for you. See everybody doing their thing and showing off. Raggedy Dog was trying to get Sunny Bunny's attention. He stood up on his hind legs and scooted past Sunny Bunny like a circus dog. Then he scrambled onto the window seat. He was about to jump down when he knocked over the book that had been holding down the balloons. Oh no, everyone cried as they watched the balloons fly high above their heads towards the ceiling. We must put the balloons back before Marcella gets home. Because if they don't, then Marcella will know that they can move around. What will we do, cried Babette in alarm. I know, said Raggedy Andy. Climb on my shoulders, he said to Percy, then reach up and try and get the strings. This is Percy, the policeman dog. 
Percy stretched and stretched, but the st strings were still too high to reach. Tin the toy soldier tried to climb on Percy's shoulder, but he didn't make it, and all three came tumbling down to the floor. I have an idea, said Tim, as he pushed a chair across the floor. One by one, he piled a stack of books upon the chair, and then he climbed on top of them. He stretched his arm out as far as he could, but it was no use. His hand was nowhere near the strings. Sonny Bunny knew exactly what to do. He hopped under the window seat. From there, he sprang to the roof of the dollhouse. One more hop and he was perched on the highest shelf in the playroom. Nice move, said Tim. He's got springs in his feet, exclaimed Raggedy Andy, his button eyes shining with excitement. The other dolls cheered. Good going, Sonny Bunny, cried Percy. You can do it. Let's see if he's gonna make it. Sonny Bunny stared at the balloons. He was almost there. He could see the strings dangling just above him. One more hop, he said to himself. He crouched down on the shelf. His nose twitched and his legs quivered as he wiggled from one side and then to the other. And then he was in a position for his final takeoff. This is it, he said bravely. Then giving a mighty push with his strong hind legs, he sailed off the shelf and out toward the strings. The other dolls below held their breath. <gasps> Do you think he's gonna catch him? Will he get this balloons and bring them back down? He's got them, cried Raggedy Andy, as Sunny Bunny caught the strings in his teeth and floated down to the floor for a perfect landing. Hooray, they all cried. Could you teach me how to hop like that, said Raggedy Andy. I could try, said Sunny Bunny. <laughs> it wouldn't work, laughed Raggedy Ann. Hopping is the one, is, like that, is one of the things that makes Sunny Bunny special. Sunny Bunny thought for a man, moment, then his face lit up. Raggedy Ann is right, he said to himself. I guess I am special after all. I just know I'm going to like it here, he said out loud, as he happily hopped from friend to friend. The end. Well, I hope you like that story. And if you would share it with your friends, uh, if you're an adult, share it with some children that you know. Maybe uh, you could uh, post it uh, in a, a neighborhood next door uh, group so kids in your neighborhood could read it uh, and watch it and maybe read along. But also do videos like this yourself. It's a lot of fun and you'll be doing a great thing for kids who can't get outside and play right now. I'm Dave Kelly, America's Student Leadership Trainer. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.